Hi, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and today we are going to be exploring all of the cool little uses of the, I guess this would be an Echo Quilting Foot, number 44C, and uh, also it's the Cutwork Foot that comes with the Bernina Cutwork Attachment. I have to tell you right now, I don't want you to make fun of me when I do my Echo Quilting exercise because it is not my what let's say it's not my area of expertise but nonetheless i hope you enjoyed this tutorial because you know it's fun to explore everything that these accessory of the months can do now speaking of accessory of the month we are in january 2021 so when you're watching this in january of uh, 2027 out there you know on the new and improved youtube that you have implanted into your your mind uh it might not be on sale at that time, but for January 2021, it's 25% off. Well, let's get started. <laughs> In the spirit of Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day, I thought I would give you guys a little treat for demoing um, our first example of how you would use number 44C. So foot number 44C is generally the foot really the foot that the machine demands that you use for cut work. And uh, right now I have about five layers of fabric that has been, and this is cotton quilting fabric, and this has been fusible webbed with heat and bond light. And I've got five layers plus a cutaway stabilizer. When I do five layers like this, I always pick my basting box around my motif so that I can hold them all together when I do my cutting. So let's cut over to the screen of the machine. I want to show you a couple of things. We're going to start by showing you this little guy. This is the Bernina Cutwork Tool. It replaces the needle with a little chisel, and there are four positions, which takes me to why we need to look at the screen. So I have made this heart that's going to be cut with the Cutwork Tool in my Bernina Embroidery software. And there are going to be uh, five color changes. The first one is the basting box, which I already did. Then we put our cut work tool on, and then each time we have to change the position, this little guy is gonna tell us. So we're gonna start with position number one because color number two, that's the two button, and then the cut work is cut one, that is cut work position number one. So we're just gonna go through that cycle as we stitch this out all while using our Bernina 44C foot. There's the star of the show, ladies and gentlemen, the Bernina 44C. Now, like I mentioned, it's used for a lot of things, but we're gonna use it as it is for the cut work right now. So I'm putting that on the machine. And now because I wanna do cut work, I'm just gonna take my needle out and then I'm going to unthread my machine all of the way. Pull that out, because I just used this blue thread for basting. And now I'm gonna take my cut work tool and it goes in just like my needle. It's got a little flat piece in the back. And then, and then I'm gonna screw this in like so. And it, see here? I'm going to zoom in for you. And this is at position one right here. It might be kind of hard to see on the video, but we have turned this to position one. So I'm ready to start cutting. So I'm going to press my button here and let it cut. One thing I am going to tell you is the more layers, the more it likes it. <laughs> so don't be worried to layer some thickness here because it will cut through just fine. Now, the Bernina Cutwork Tool can be used with the Bernina Design Work Software and Cutwork Software, or you can also use the Cutwork Tool. It's the only part of the Bernina Embroidery uh, Software that will work with one of our uh, mixed media tools. So the Cutwork Tool works with Bernina Embroidery Software 8 as well.
So now the machine has stopped and told me to go to position two, which I just did. And now I'm ready to stitch again. It stopped again, so now we go to position three, and now I press. Now I'll tell you, why do you want a foot like this when you do the cut work? And mostly because it's a wide foot, and it will help if something flops over in front of the foot, it will help it so it doesn't get stuck. Like if we use the really skinny number 26 foot that we would normally use for embroidery, I have seen it where before we had this foot, it could get stuck under here and cause like an issue as we have all of these different layers. So this helps it glide over. Much like um, we have an example that I'm gonna demonstrate for you for why you might wanna use this for raw edge quilting as well. So um, just keep that in mind. But now we're on our final cut here. All right. Okay, our piece is done. I wanna show you how awesome it is. We can lift our foot, take off our hoop, and just pop our cut work pieces out. Now, sometimes there's a few little threads in there that I need to liberate from the pack, but for the most part, it does a fantastic job at cutting. So there are our little hearts. Now you're gonna see these in action in just a moment. I'm gonna start off with my red heart and I'm gonna show you how to do raw edge applique and then I'm also gonna show you how to do echo quilting. So as promised, here I am with the second technique that I wanted to show you with the Bernina 44C echo quilting foot. Um, this is one of the hearts that I cut out that you saw. And because I had put the fusible web on the back, all I had to do is peel the paper off and iron this down. And I did on my super cute little uh, Merci Paris uh, fabric. So now I wanna just show you how to do raw edge applique. And then also in this segment, it's also gonna be, I'm also gonna be showing you how to use the little marks on this foot for echo quilting. So let's just get started with some easy raw edge applique. Now there's a hundred different techniques that we could do. I could do kind of like a little thread painting, jaggedy little design around the heart, but that's just not the style that I wanna do with this. So what I wanna do is just do about just a little more than an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the material. So I'm gonna put my foot down and I'm gonna use just that first ring around the heart to go around my applique. So I'm gonna start in the point. Don't ask me why I start in the point, I just do. And I'm gonna bring my needle down and bring my needle back up again. Then I'm gonna lift my presser foot and I'm just gonna use my little heart straight pin to grab my bobbin thread up through there. There we go. Now, there's no stitch regulation with this, so, you know, practice that um, moving the fabric slowly through the machine and increasing the speed of the motor. Now,
Now that is not exactly perfect, but what I failed to tell you is that when you go around the side, there is a little guide in front of and behind the needle. So now let's have a look. So see where I didn't pay attention? To the guide over here as much, but then over here, I got better at it. You know, you can just practice. And honestly, I want this to look a little bit, you know, raw, edgy and imperfect. So I don't mind at all doing that. Another thing that you could do is you could literally come back again a little bit closer to the edge overlap so it just looks like a scribble and so that's what I'm gonna do there we go all right I'm totally fine with that. And also, if you're new to this, you might also consider doing an invisible thread or something that matches the heart. So now, I promised you that I would show you how to do some echo quilting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this second ring around this foot as my distance from my previous stitching. So I'm just gonna hop on over here and line that up with the edge of my applique. So see how the red material is right at the edge of that ring? So that ring, I'm gonna do all the way around the foot. So I'm gonna try to do this slowly so that you can see what I'm talking about. So lining up that second ring right with the edge of my heart. And now if you don't want to pivot very much, see how behind my foot, on that ring behind my foot, I'm still keeping it. And then as I go around the heart, I'm keeping that right side around. Okay, now it's time to go this way. So there's my echo. Let's zoom out a little bit. You can see. So now I'm gonna go around time number two and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kind of create a spiral. So I'm just gonna come out this way. There we go. And now here we go again. Now I'm lining it up against my previous stitching. And if you need to pivot, you can, because we're working with a small piece, but what I try to teach is for you to not pivot so that you can manage your big bulky quilts this way. That's why it's important to know that we can go around. All the different ways around. So we just go this way now. And you can see the echo effect is happening. And I think once you start not trying to think about it along the edge, but kind of looking through the needle, you get a much smoother look. I'm just smoothing out that little bump I made because I'm not claiming to be an echo quilting expert here. 
And if you are looking for something, a little point here down here. You know what I like to think of with echo quilting? I like to think of echo quilting as the gossip line where the first pass looks this way and then you kind of correct it on the second pass and then you keep going, but then eventually the shape that you end up with is totally different than the one you started with. To show you that I've now switched on to the side of the echo quilt foot here and I think some of you will find that this is a little bit easier to do take a little bit of practice with this foot fair warning so you know it's easier to go slower it's easier when there's not a camera in your lap that's for sure but also like when I get to a little area like this I can even go backwards with it just as long as I'm lining the guide up against my foot And I'm just going to travel back this way. And finish up. So now I'm going to trim this up. And then it'll be a nice, cute little heart to put on display in our window for Valentine's Day. All right, so I'm here with my other example of how you can do free motion stitching on top of raw edge applique that's not been appliqued down with a specific stitch. So the way that you would do this, as opposed to maybe using your Bernina stitch regulator foot where it can get kind of stuck on these little edges like this, you actually are just gonna use this and it kind of will glide over the pieces that might get you know, flopped over. For instance, on this bag that you see here, um, this was all done in the embroidery module, but those little leaves were actually all um, kind of pressed down and we used a very lightweight fusible web and sometimes the little ends of them picked up. And, you know, I do watch my embroidery, but I wasn't constantly monitoring it. So using a foot like the number 44C really prevented a little accident from the um, raw edge applique poking up and getting the foot obstructed. So I'm just going to go ahead and start over here on the edge, and I guess this would be my sit-down machine quilting version of an edge-to-edge -edge project. So I'm going to lower my foot and bring my needle in and up, and then bring my foot up so I can pull my thread, pull my bobbin thread up through the bottom. All right, and now I'm just going to do a meander. And once again, there's no stitch regulation with this. So I'm just kind of starting and keeping an even speed with the machine and an even flow with my hands.
You also notice is as I go off the edge of this into the batting, the foot also helps because it doesn't get stuck under the, the quilt top. I'm happy with the end result of this. So I'm going to trim it up and then I'm going to uh, put it in the window for St. Patrick's Day. Maybe put a binding on it. I wanted to show you something similar to what we did on that bag. And all it is is I imported a multi-direction stitch that looks like stippling and now I'm going to embroider rows of it out in my embroidery unit and I have my machine threaded with some white thread. I put some raw edge applique down here and I just want to show you how easily this foot glides right over this raw edge applique. And look, easy like that, it glided right over the fabric. So what do you think? Here's our echo quilting sample, our free motion shamrock. Look, I'm just ready for all of the holidays here. What can I say? And then uh, here's the little uh, bonus thing, doing the uh, embroidery stitches there. I think it was pretty cool. And like I said, one of my favorite uses of the number 44 C foot is the coat work tool. I think it's amazing. Stay tuned for more demonstrations on that. I love the design works, but I particularly like that it works with the new Bernina Embroidery Software version 8.2. Well, if you like this video and you want to see more just like it, don't forget to tune in to the Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And we also like it when you like us and you comment. Who wouldn't want to know what you have to say or what's on your mind? And also click the little bell and then every time we upload a video, even if it's in the middle of the night, ding, ding, there comes the alert right onto your smartphone. Well, anyway, in the meantime, come on in, get a foot 25% off the number 44C foot. You'd think I'd remember that by now. And enjoy your sewing, and I'll see you later. Bye.